Thanks for uh, coming to Cincinnati and what is the last press conference for Julie Ertz. I know. Uh, before we get going, and we have questions online too, but we'll take them from the room first. Uh, Twy, I was just gonna say a few things about, about Julie. Go ahead, Twy. Oh, great. Well, just wanna start by saying this is, it's hard to say goodbye, but it's also good. Hard because we know what we're losing, but good because we know how happy Julie is with her career, how happy we all are with her career, but also how happy she is with the next phase of life she's moving into. I didn't know if I was gonna get an opportunity to coach Julie because she wasn't in the environment when I first got hired as an assistant. And what she's brought is just a high level of detail, high level of detail in everything she does. Organization on the pitch that's just unmatched, the ability to play across two different lines, the competitiveness, like the slide tackling. Um, at every moment, she just brings the very, very best out of herself and the group. I won't go too much into the personal side of things because uh, there's a lot of emotions there, but just really happy to get the time off the field with you and see what an impact you have on your teammates and the environment around you. So we are gonna enjoy every last minute we get with Julie and enjoy the process. Thank you. <laughs> All right, questions for Twyla or Julie. Bridge got a mic, go ahead, JT. Thank you, Aaron. Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hi, Julie. How are you? Good. And when you look at what is now the generation coming after you, I mean, Andy Sullivan's been here for a while playing your position even, but there's also, there's also Sam Coffey and there will be others. What do you see coming and what do you see into the future of this program? I'm super excited for the future. I think the, the generation is, the next generation is very talented, very hungry. And I think just hoping that, you know, even just in my short time back that, um, the veterans could have just been able to kind of show them the, the DNA that um, is like the base foundation of this team. But what they bring is something different. I think every single time I've been in kind of like the next cycle, there is something that they bring and elevate. Um, and I do think just the sophistication and flair um, that kind of the next generation has, I think um, is really incredible. So I'm excited for them. and. Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited for those two. I think the sixth position is the best. So I think that I'm excited for them and their future as well. I have to ask you if we will see you back in the eastern neck of the woods or whether Phoenix is going to be it. <laughs> I, I'm, in, I'm in Phoenix right now. So that, that's my home, even though it's still 100 plus degrees. <laughs> Go ahead, Nance. Julie, you were one of, I think, three players that played every single minute at the World Cup, which, you know, given your late comeback was pretty astounding. Did you give any thought to going on or is it, you know, the family considerations make it too hard? And, and what did you take away from those, what, five months or four months with the team? Yeah, I think this year specifically has been so cra crazy, so eye-opening, I think, especially as a first-time mom, there's just everything for me was first time um, trying to figure out what life looks like as a as a mom. Um, but this was also a very, um, I don't even know if I have the right word just because it was such a unique experience for me, but be able to share it with my son. But I didn't really think about the, like the future. Like at that point, it was just, you know, when I was asked like, okay, are you gonna, you can try. I was like, I'll definitely try. And luckily I've been able to be around such unbelievable professional players and play with, you know, veterans before me, um, that like whatever the expectation is and the level and the standard that was set, it's like, I knew that that's where I had to be in order to, to compete or be at my best. And, um, I think obviously that comes with experience and luckily I've been able to have, um, a long career in that to, to know what the level that I needed to be was. So yeah, I, it's, <laughs> I also feel like this year I aged a dog years or like, I just, it was just so much going on and, you know, everything and emotions was so new to me. Um, but yeah, it was a definitely memorable experience for me. Thank you. 
Hi, Julie. Meg hey. Lohan, The Athletic. Um, I know, obviously, this is your U.S. Women's National Team send-off, but a long NWSL career from, you know, top draft pick um, through Chicago to, to Angel City. What are, how are you feeling about that part of your career and how it enabled you to, to be such a major part of the U.S. Women's National Team? Being a part of the NWSL around the time when we first started um, to now, the growth is just what players sacrificed um, in so many ways so that the next generation could have um, a domestic league is one of the coolest parts about my career. Um, and I think obviously being away and even just the three times and being at such an elite club with Angel City in the time that I had was just kind of like the cherry on top of being a part of something that has made history and I hope continue just skyrockets as more teams are coming into the league. Um, from me coming out of college and being drafted to Chicago, um, you know, obviously like in order to, <laughs> at that point to really just even kind of like survive, I was just like, okay, if I'm not with the national team, like, can I still play? Like even just at that point financially or just in general. Um, so yeah, like I didn't have the NWSL to be able for the coaches to see, um, obviously like, I guess my alternative would have been internationally, but like, I, I don't know. Like I know some people had to end their careers earlier because it was just trying to figure out how do you make this league su successful for the girls to be successful. So without the NWSL, I'm not sure that at that time, Jill would have been able to to see my product um, and also be able to play with elite players that were on the national team that also saw that this is how we have to make a league in order to be successful and the sacrifices that those players have made. And not even just national teams, like the first five years, any player that played on the national team made massive sacrifices to hope and that this league was gonna be something that could be sustainable and allow young players to, to succeed and dream. Just in terms of those sacrifices, I mean, both from an NWSL point of view and a US point of view, this is a team that obviously it's kind of gone through it in mm -hmm. terms of fighting for more. Is there something, a memory or, or something that you'll take through that part of your career and, and kind of hold with you as you move into the next phase? Yeah, I think just the connection that I've just learned that like, if you've ever wear the crest, it just, you just are part of the family that like nobody really understands except for the players that have played here um, with the team and I think the memories of like us coming into meetings and collectively coming together and, you know, the older ones to the next ones, the next ones, how do you make it better? What does that look like? Hard conversations, you know, emotional paths to, to try and, you know, make it better, I think are just part of this team that has made it so special. Um, and you grow up here. So it's like, I think, you know, I think, now talking about with memories, I think that's the emotional part that I'm at right now is when I step away with a player that I've played with for a really long time and you start talking about memories and history and just things that you have together, I think is obviously extremely memorable. And I think, you know, outside of stuff that this team has done is incredible. But even just for me, like seeing the impact that this team has, I mean, it's had a huge impact on me on wanting to start like our foundation, like ourselves, because we saw like, wow, this team does have an incredible platform. And, you know, I think that's just been an incredible space to grow up in, to, to make you just not just a better soccer player, but a better person. Go to the Ertz Family Foundation website for more information. <laughs> Still good, it's gonna do some good Thanks work. We're going back, well, let's go to Jules and we'll go to Nance and then we'll go online. Jeff, hold on, Seth, hold on. Go ahead, Jules. Jules, congratulations, Thanks. my friend, on such a great career. When you're weighing the pluses and minuses, because I think the hard thing for a lot of athletes is it's only 10 months until the Olympics mm -hmm. and it's a tight turn. And so you have that, can I, can I possibly make it? It's only 10 months. How hard was that given how quickly this Olympics is going to come in terms of making that decision? And what were the biggest factors that weighed into that? I'm. I think the biggest factor for sure is like anything that this sport takes is sacrifice. And I think time with my family is just irreplaceable, especially with just where Madden is in his age. And 
yeah, I, I've learned that after every tournament, obviously very successful one or not, it's always like, what's next? What's next? Like, I just feel like this sport is so incredible because you just can always grow as a player and you always want to get better. There's always the next opportunity. And you know, my, your whole career as an athlete, you're like, I just, I don't want to regret anything. And I think you just, when I get to a point to be able to choose myself when I could step away and I do feel like I could step away and be like, it's not because mama can't play. Mama can play. <laughs> she just has just adapted my priorities. And I think that just comes with age and just, I, I feel like I've been such so blessed to have um, the career that I've had, but two professional athletes living in a household and incredible memories. And yeah, I think it is like emotional. I think you, you asked it, but then there's just some part in your heart that is just like, you just know. And I think that is closure enough for me. Um, and I think that's why I'm just so grateful to have this last game to just close the chapter and say bye. Um, but I don't know, I feel like if I retired five years ago, if I retired in 10 years, like the day that you choose the sport that you know your whole life is just a sad day. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. We mentioned the foundation, uh, and that's part of why I asked if we'd see you much in Philadelphia going forward because of how, mu how much do you expect that work to play in your life now going forward? Huge. I think, you know, that that's a big part of our life as well and the reason why we started it. And obviously the House of Hope in Philly is near and dear to our heart. Philly has been, you know, huge in our career, and that's kind of where Zach and I, you know, grew up as married couple, as people, um, and so obviously it has a huge part in our heart and um, part of the House of Hope is to make an impact, not just obviously this year, next year, hopefully for a long time in a community that needs it. Um, so yeah, I think it's important for us to you know go back and forth, but also do continue it in whatever community that we live in as well. So um, yeah, I think it's just kind of finding you know where we can help and how we can help. So um, yeah, obviously we'll be back as as the House of Hope will be there, hopefully for a long time, um, but continue where where we're needed. Back to Nancy. Julie, you kind of maybe kind of went through this a little bit um, before the game in St. Louis with the, the hundred cap honoring, but have you kind of taken a look back at the entirety of your career and and kind of zoned in on what you're most proud of or what you'll take away most and how do you think the emotions tomorrow night will compare with what they were in april for you i'm um, knowing me probably emotional but just because of like the joy that the sport gives me i think um the hundred cap was was super emotional in its own way just because it was like I, you know, I, it wasn't not in my thought like, oh, I, I'm, I can't come back from pregnancy. I didn't know what that was going to look like. And so, yes, I think this time from deciding to hang up my boots, all I've been able to do is like reflect. And I think the hardest part of it is that moment where you talk to teammates or people send you messages of just the most kind words, I think. So I think that's almost the most emotional part because you want to make an impact in so many ways. And I think when a teammate just says like, thank you for it. And then they just list the memory. I think that's the hard, the hard thing is like going through memories. It was like, I feel like maybe it's like the, like an office quote where it's like, I wish you know you were in the good times when you were in the, in the good, you know what I mean? Because even it's like, you remember all the hardest times of the sport and you're just like, in that moment, you're like, this sucks. I want this to be gone. And then now when, you know, you're older, you're like, gosh, I'm so grateful for that time. And it's like, if I just knew in that moment that I was like, actually in such like an incredible time, you're just like, dang, it goes by so fast. I wish someone would write a song about that. The, the office. <laughs> I'm sure they have. The office. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take a couple online. Jeff, Carlisle. One second, Jeffrey. Oh, that might be too loud. 
Can you hear me now? Yep. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, I was just curious, you know, looking back at, at the World Cup, you know, what did you make of the, the team's performance and, and your performance in that tournament? And then on a more personal level, what are you going to miss the most about playing professionally and in particular playing with the U.S. Women's National Team? Well, I'll answer the last one, I'll answer the last one first. Um, I think just competing. I just love the the environment of just women's soccer. Like I just love getting up competing and um, just all the banter that happens in, in just practice and games. And um, yeah, so obviously you're going to miss game day. You're going to list all that stuff. I feel like, I feel like at this point when you just reflect on everything, you're just going to miss everything. But I think just competing and, and winning is, is probably the one I'm going to miss the most. Um, and then well, like, I know you were asking about what, just what about the World Cup? Sorry. Overall thoughts on the World Cup. Yeah. I mean, I think it was obviously disappointing. I, you know, I think when you go in and you know, everyone that's there, you want to win. So obviously we weren't close at all to our goal and that's disappointing for many reasons. I think for me, just obviously coming back and having the year that I've had, um, and being able to, to just play and, um, was an absolute joy for me. Um, um, you're asked what I'm proud. I, I honestly like just obviously going back into the back line. I'm super proud of the back line. I mean, I think, you know, keeping teams for to very limited chances is just incredible. And I, I really had a good time with, with that, with the back line of coming together and kind of being back where I was in 2015. And, um, anytime you can help this team and make an impact, that's what you want to do. So for me, I'm pro it's funny coming back and reflecting on it. Um, cause I don't think a lot of people take time to just say like, I'm proud of yourself. Like that just sounds bizarre, but I am just it, with the year that I've had, it was so up and down and emotional and great and unique. And I feel like every single word you could possibly think of in the world, that's just what happened in that eight months time. So Yes, I yes, it was disappointing for sure, but I've but I'm have noticed that in any setback makes for a better comeback. Um and that happened for us in the 2016 Olympics to the 2019 and it's really about how you learn from this and I know that there was obviously plenty first timers at the World Cup and um I'm excited to see their comeback. Seth Hortelny online. Go ahead, Seth. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Julie, for most of your national team career, the U.S. has occupied this position as sort of the undisputed best team in the world. Um, and over the, the last couple of years, that's that started to change a little bit. And so I was wondering, you know, as you kind of exit this stage, as, if you had any thoughts or any ideas and how the U.S. can kind of get back to the top. When? I, the way to get back on the top is you got to win. So that's, you know, that, that's a bunch of things. Like, I feel like it's so obvious. I could sit here and be like, well, this and that. At the end of the day, you have to score goals. You have to get them in the back of the net and you can't make excuses. Well said, Julie. Last one goes to Lakin Littman. Go ahead, Lakin. Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Hey, Julie. Um, as you leave the national team and just reflect on the group that is still there, is there a younger player that maybe we know of or don't know of who might be the next, like, quote, unquote, you or <laughs> someone, you know, who's that general on the field, that leader in the locker room, on the field, you know, someone who you kind of identify that has that it factor that you have? Oh, I appreciate that. I feel like that's kind of a hard loaded question. I, I think there's so much talent in that locker room, and I think – I feel like comparison is always so hard. I think whatever the saying is, comparison is a thief of joy. And I think everyone brings their own thing. And I think having the expectation that someone's just going to fill into someone the way someone is um, kind of takes away from what they have. Um, there's tremendous space for players to grow into. And I think, you know, as I've been here for what, 11, 11 12 years, whatever it's been, um, you grow into that position off of um, adversity, off of, experience and so i think every individual player needs to go through their own journey for what that is um i think it's obviously no secret i would say i've played with Lindsay for a really long time you know she wore the captain's arms band i think it's obviously just natural as well 
But you have incredible players that have been incredible players for a long time. And I think when that space is gone, you you need to just step in on your own term. And I've already seen that, like obviously with with Rose and um, with Nay, like you just, you don't, I feel like you don't say, oh, this player, you need to do this. You gotta find it in your own way. And you find that by going through stuff and um, experience and years. So I appreciate that you've, your kind words of that I've made an impact in that, but that's just because um, having the veterans that are there for, uh, ahead of you and you watch and you learn, I think you just take what you are comfortable with and adapt. And that's how you kind of like get the best from your player. Um, so I wouldn't say, oh, this is the role that you you need to feel. That's that's for the choice of the individual. Um, and we have plenty of individuals that, that will do that. Awesome. Well, I guess on behalf of U.S. soccer and all the fans and even the media, congratulations, Joel. It's definitely yeah. been an honor, and we're, we're looking forward to giving you a, a fine farewell tomorrow. Thanks, right. guys.